Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, before I start, how many of you actually um, use SMP before? Just one. <laughs> or you already advanced to ELK, Elastic Search? No? Okay, great. So hopefully my presentation will be useful for you. Okay, so today's presentation is about um, how to monitor your router. Okay. So we are focused basically on the simple network management protocol and a little bit of ELK. Okay. Let me introduce myself because this is my first trip to Cambodia, so I'm sure that uh, most of you doesn't know me. <laughs> My name is Soragan Ong. Okay. Um, I'm a certified microtech trainer since 2016. So it's about close to three years. Um, I'm also an IP Physics Forum certified engineer. So IP Physics Forum is a group of people that pushing for IP Physics usage around the world. So each country, they have a localized group. Um, they call it a chapter. So we, for us, we are in Singapore, we have a Singapore chapter, okay? And I work for Alagas Network, okay? So since I work for Alagas Network, of course, I have to introduce a little bit about uh, Alagas Network, okay? Um, we are the value-added distributor for Microtech based in Singapore. And we have been distributing since 2010. So it's more than uh, eight, nine years already. Okay. We are also uh, the first one to work with an ISP in Singapore to launch two GBPS, the second in the world after the Japan. Okay, in 2014. So in 2014, we already have two GBPS in Singapore, and the price is very affordable. Because in Singapore, 99% of the area is all fiber. Everything is covered by fiber. That's why we can reach this speed. Okay, we, we are also the training center for Microtech since 2016. So, we're talking about monitoring, okay? Means that we want to get information, we want to see how the router is going. Is it healthy? Is it sick? Okay? So, how can we monitor? The basic way, very easy. You don't need an external software. You have a router, Everything's inside, you just have to use the tools inside and get some basic information about your router. Okay, so no external software. Everything's inside the MicroT router. Okay. Then the other one is that you require an external software. So this means that you must have an application, a software running somewhere else whether it's inside a server or is inside your laptop. But it must be somewhere else. And this modern method, right, you cannot achieve without the software. Of course, the Microtech must have something that supports this software. This is what we are going to talk about today, which is the SMP protocol. Okay. It's the other one is called flows. Flows contain the information of the packets that's going through your router. So in other words, this is the network traffic. So it has all the information, you collect it, and then you display it, you analyze it. Okay. And the last one is the one that you probably familiar. It's called the DUDE. So this is a monitoring software, and it's also the management software that created by Microtech. Okay. Free. Okay. 
So the built-in tools. Any idea what built-in tools inside? Have you go into the tools menu inside the Winbox and take a look what are there? Features inside there? One of them? Are you familiar with this? This is from the Microtik itself. You don't need external software. You connect using the Winbox, and then you can see it. It's small, but the information is very useful. What does it tell you? It will tell you your hardware health. Is your hardware still healthy? Okay. What is your fan status, for example? Which one is your active fan? So some of the big units they have two fans inside. Okay. You can choose to run one of them only or both. Okay. And you can see your fan speed. So it will tell you that how fast your fan is running. If Microtik said that oh this model the fan is supposed to be running above five thousand RPM, right? But when you open up this and you see it's only one thousand, what does that mean? Rusty. Your fan, your fan is failing soon, right? Something is wrong with your fan. It doesn't rotate as fast as it can. The other things that you can see, electricity supply. So there is a voltage here, right? You may already know that Microtik support a very big range of uh, voltage, right? The input that you can take. What is the minimum? Some of what that has. Eight, some of them is 10 volt, right? But average, the board actually is taking 24 volt. Okay, that's a 24 volt DC. So if you are seeing the voltage drop, meaning that something is wrong with the input. If it's too high, something is wrong with your power supply. And if it's very, very high, right, if it's out of the range that is supported by your router, then you can do a grilling on your router because it will be very hot and it will burn the board. <laughs> so there is a tolerance that uh, a range that you, um, doesn't hurt the router. Right? And if you are using a battery input into the router where you put two battery, Two times twenty-four volt, right? If you see this from time to time, keep dropping. Okay, this thing actually can be monitored from SMMP. If you see the voltage true drop, means that your battery is running out. So you see, there's a lot of information that you can get from here. You can see the temperature, you can see the current, how much power is using, and from here. If you plan to run it 24 hours using a battery, you can calculate how long your battery can run, right? And you can monitor your router. Okay? Temperature and the hardware failure. Fan, PSU, these are the two more important things. If it's getting too hot, you have problem. One of your PSU fail, then it's time to replace. So if power attached, when the voltage drop, if you are using by three, then you know that oh, the input has been cut. It's running on battery. After sometimes the voltage will keep dropping. Okay. Second picture. We should see this more, right? This could be one of the favorite things when you want to check if you experience slowness. Okay. Resource usage. 
CPU, RAM, storage. Okay, these are very important for a router. But usually, Microsoft routers supply more than enough, except the CPU. Okay. Okay. And storage. And when you see the CPU is high or the RAM is low, you know that it's time for the hardware upgrade. Okay. So you have to know your router, you have to know how healthy is the router. Is it healthy? Is it sick? Is it time to upgrade? Or this router can stay, keep running for two to three years? Okay. Profile? Anybody use this? You use this? Okay, good. So when you see the Come on, faster. When you see the CPU over here, you can see, oh, this is a CCI1009. It has nine core. But the CPU is running 100%. So the profile will be able to tell you what is actually running, Who, which features inside your router that is consuming all the CPU. Okay. And it will tell you, oh, this is the CPU, this is the usage? Or it's using by firewall, or it's using by Ethernet. Sometimes you will see that the firewall is using 90% of the CPU, while the Ethernet is only 10% or less. Or you're seeing the idle CPU. So from there, you will know that something is wrong with my firewall. Is it not efficient enough? Or am I being attacked? Because when you're getting a DDoS attack, your firewall will keep dropping, dropping, dropping the packet, and the CPU usage will be very, very high. So the profile tool right, will tell you the detail what is being used for the CPU. Okay. Torch. This is also one of your best friend if you are troubleshooting the network using the MacTree router. Okay. We give you the details. You can do it based on the interface. If you see something, some of your WAN, right, if you have multiple WAN, the Traffic is very high. This will be your best friend. Open it up. Take a look at all the information, and you will see who is using what. What is the protocol? What is the VLAN? All these things. Okay. Torch is very useful when you want to see the live status of your interface. Okay. It's live, but it doesn't keep the information. You close it, it's gone. Okay? This is one of the weakness of the built-in tools, right? You do not get the information. You do not get the history of the statistic. Okay? Another part is that you can see the traffic of particular interface. You will get the Visual, okay. So there's two type of interface. Generally, that you see, of course, there's other type like EOIP or so, but you can still see the traffic, okay. But generally, you can see interface and queue, okay. If you go to the traffic, you can actually see the live. But this is a less detail. From Torch, in Torch, you see each of the detail packet, the port the protocol, but status per interface on that particular interface, you will see that how much is the usage. This is the speed. All right. You can see there's two graph. Why? 
why do we need to see two graphs? I only want to know that my router is using 100 Mbps. What is the second one? What is P per second? Anybody know? What's P? Packet. So when you are choosing a router, besides that you want to look at the throughput, whether you can take 100 Mbps, whether you can take 1 Gbps, but you also want to see how many packets you can process. Okay? <laughs> graphing? Anybody use graphing here? Use? Okay. So graphing actually allow you to collect the history of the resource usage of your network traffic okay but this is this is the basic and simple okay you can take a look at the graphic based on the interface based on the queue but you can get you cannot get other information like the voltage fan speed whatever is available via the SMP that is why this is only basic but the good thing about graphic it can store information. Whatever you collect, if you inside the graphic, it's there from the past. Okay. So when you try to generate traffic, this is for example, the graph. You can see there's a daily graph, there's a weekly graph, right? There's a monthly and yearly. And it will look slightly different because each of the value here is the average. So you see that the daily graph has a five minutes, five minutes average. This does not mean that your current in out 41.78 is the current no. Right? This value is the average of the past five minutes. So this is the average, it's not the current. If you want to see the current, if you see the live, go to the torch. Okay. Last but not least, traffic monitor. Anyone know what's, what's this? We already have a traffic, the tab. We already have a graphing. What is Traffic monitor. It's written here. Proactive. Okay. Proactive monitoring with action script. What is action script? Anyone do microtic scripting? Don't think that you are a new engineer, you don't need programming, huh? You need to learn programming. <laughs> I used to think that I don't like programming. I better do network. I don't need programming. But nowadays, no. Programming is needed inside the network. Even though you are a network engineer, you still need to learn programming. So, the SQL script, the script thing inside the microtech is very useful. You need to learn about this. Okay? So, it's proactive. Proactive meaning that you're doing the monitoring, you see something, you have to proactive do something. Right. Previous one, you see this graphic, uh, one Gbps, all your CPU is hundred percent. It's not. It doesn't do anything. You just look at it. Oh yeah, my ECB is hundred percent. My RAM is hey, zero free. It doesn't do anything. Okay. But proactive for this traffic monitor, you can specify. Okay. If particular interface. Oh. This is my ISP1. If ISP1 is full, which is 100 Mbps, do something. So traffic monitor allow you to do this. If my bandwidth, if I subscribe for 1 Gbps and I already use up 90%, this tool, you can configure it to send an SMS 
if you have a GSM modem inside or send an email. And some interesting part, some of the router has a speaker inside. You can actually make a sound. So it depends on how you do the scripting. That's why I said that script, you have to learn it programming. And it's very, very interesting. Okay? Do you want to see the demo? Skip? Oh, everyone is so quiet. <laughs> okay, so since you come to the mom, all of you have this. Uh, okay, I'm also using the same device. Okay. So the good thing about Microtech, the features is the same for all devices. No matter whether it's a small device or it's a big device. CCR or how many features is the same. Okay, they do not discount on the feature. The difference is probably the performance, the network interface, whether you have fiber, SFP, 10G, 1G. Okay. Do you want to see or you want to skip to SMP? You want to see? Okay. Because SMP, I think, is more interesting. Okay, so we just quickly go through. So there is a lot of tools here you can use for different purposes. Okay? If you go to the MDCNA, this will be the last part of the topic. Okay. So you can see the interface. You can see all the interface. You click on it, usually the last step, there will be a place for you to see the traffic. No traffic. Why? Why? You are monitoring a router. You try to see the traffic, and but there is no traffic. Why? Why? Yes, no active connection. This port is not connected. But if you connect to here, then you can see some. So don't panic when you say, oh, why? There's no traffic. What happened? Take a look at the interface status first. Okay. So you can see the, the rate of the uh, bandwidth and number of packets. Okay. And there's graphing. Okay. Let's add this. Okay, store on the disk. And then we will come back later. We will take a look, see how is the thing. Okay. Profile. When you see your CPU usage is 100%, don't panic. Come here and take a look at what is using your CPU. Okay. Do 
It will tell you what is using the CPU. Whether it's the queue, because there's one user only assigned one megabit, but trying to do one GB GBPS, they will hit the queue. Or someone is testing your firewall, where you will get 100% on the firewall, CPU usage, everything. Okay, So this will give you a detail on what is using the CPU. Okay? And from there, you can optimize your router configuration. So, SMP. What is SMP? Simple, right? We see why it's called simple. It's a network management. Okay, so this is not just to monitor, but most of the time, right? We use this for monitoring. Okay. So it's called network management protocol. So this is a protocol. Okay. Uh, it's created by IETF. So IETF is an organization that usually all these people will come together, discuss about engineering thing and what to do with the internet. Does the current internet need something to be standardized and all these things? Okay. Including IPv6. Okay. It's created quite some time ago. So they start talking about this uh, with a different name. CO or something. Okay. And in 1989, okay, they come up with the name SIMP. But usually in IETF, they start the discussion, change, 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 change. So this is what you call RFC. So it's finalized in 1991. So it's almost 20, 30 years in the market, but people are still using it. Okay. It's application layer because it does not determine how the new network layers below it works. Okay, it's just used whatever is there, and do the processing of the data. Okay. So Microtech support version 1, this is very old, but sometimes people still using it, and it's very insecure. 2C, C, common. It's too common. Meaning that a lot of people are using 2C. But 2C is still insecure. Because all, all the data are transmitted in plain text. So they come up with version 3. In version 3, you can specify the encryption. You can specify username and password. So it's more secure. Okay. So why SMP? Why? Why not others? It's open standard. So open standard means that everyone can just use it without having to to worry that some other vendors does not support. But all vendors support this, okay? And it's simple. Okay. It can help with the remote monitoring. So you don't use SMP on the local host. You use it to remotely monitor a device through the network. And it requires minimal bandwidth and CPU. So the usage of the network is very small because the data it transmits is very little. Okay. And ability to monitor many data. So you can actually extend SMP to monitor other things okay, inside the device. How is it done? Later, we we'll see. Architecture, there are three things that uh, you have to memorize, you have to remember 
when you try to configure SMP or you want to try to deploy SMP. Okay? The first one is the agent. So what is the agent? Is it a people sitting there uh, collect information and give it to you? So agent is a process. Okay, it's a software. We call it agent. You run it. Okay, it's, it's, so it's a process that running inside the nodes. Okay, so those device, those routers, switch that running the SMP, we call it nodes. Okay, that collect information. So it's running there. It collect all the information. The voltage, temperature, okay, whatever, so whatever that you ask it to configure, uh, to, to collect, okay. And it's running on one six one UDP, okay. Second one is manager. As you see, the name manage is to manage the agent to get the information. Okay, in SMP, this is actually getting the information from the agent. Okay. So it's running in the host, your laptop, maybe your Linux server, your Windows server, Mac server, whatever. Okay, Linux server, Unix. Okay. So it requests the information from the agent. So this, this, this manager right, is not running and sitting down and waiting for the information to come, no. Manager will actively connect to the agent, collect the information. So you send a request to UDP 161 because it needs to request the information from the agent. Okay. This is the one that the most lazy. Meaning that you will not actively do something. Trap is a process okay, that running on the host. Again, on the host, not the nodes, right? Meaning that this could be usually this one is running on the same host as the manager, but this one is lazy, so it doesn't do anything. You just sit there, waiting. So it's called a trap. You will sit there, and on port UDP one six two. You sit there on 162 instead of 161. 161 is the agent, 162 is the trap. And then you're waiting for the information to come. Okay, so this one is passive. It will not connect to the agent. Okay. The components. So yes, SMP. What are inside the SMP? What information are being exchanged? What is this information called? MIB, man in black. No, it's management information base. Okay? So in SMB world, you have to know there is a so called MIB. Okay? You don't need to know anything else, but this is very important. MIB. Okay? Then there is this object identifier. Okay? There's three things. And then there is a SMI. The first and the second one you need to know. The third one, it's good that if you know, you can do more things, but it doesn't hurt if you doesn't know. Okay. So structure of management information. So you can see this is the structure of the first one. Okay. So what is management information base? It's a database. So MIB will contain the information you want to get. You want to get the statistic of the network, it contains the information inside. Okay. And it's also a collection of objects. These objects is the things that you monitor. This is called object. So it's a collection of these objects. Okay. And hierarchical tree format. What is hierarchical tree format? You know a tree, right? Okay. Example. I saw ORG DOD internet. Okay. There's one dot three dot six dot one. So in OID, right, the information that you want to retrieve 
For example, I want to know what is my current CPU usage. Okay. How do you tell the agent? You, you, you tell the agent the OID. You send the OID. I want to monitor this OID. It's something like, uh, in network, it's, it's something like IP address. I want to reach this host, but instead of IP address, I want to monitor this particular information. Okay. So it's a tree. Meaning that it has a lot of branches. Okay. There's a one, two, three, four, five. But to monitor a router, for Microtech, you'll be interested in private. Because whatever is under the private, right, you can create your own tree. You can register and you'll be given a number. Just like Microtech. Okay? So Microtech will be given. Anyone know what's the number? For Microtech? No? What's the number for Microtech? 14988. So Microtech is the 14,988 that obtaining its own OID under the enterprise. So what does this mean? Right? When you go from up, down, 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 down here, okay, you get this. So this is this is the address, the complete address that there's one thing inside the router that you want to monitor. When you send this to the agent, hey, agent, I'm manager. I send this to you. I want to know what is the value of this information. Okay? You have to send the OID. So you get you the value. So you might go take. Uh, if you want to know what are the things that can be monitored, actually there is a URL. Okay. You can go to the SMP. There is a link to download the MIB. So MIB, this MIB contain the custom information that only available in Microtech. There's other standard MIB, MIB2, SMP, MIB, if MIB that you can monitor. Okay? But for Microtech device, because they are like special information, wireless information, all these things, it's not available in the standard. It's only for their own. Okay? So when you open up the MIB file, this is how it looks like inside. If you look at this, you see all these things. Okay? So if you don't know, uh, for example, we have a microtech. Okay, I want to monitor what is the RoutOS version. Do you know that we can get this information from the SMP? RoutOS version only available in microtech. You go to other brands, you try to connect the SMP, you try to connect the OID, you will not return you anything. Only in microtech because this is under 14988. Okay, under the tree. So you tell you, okay, this is the information. Okay, the first one is Microtik. So you can see the number is 54988. This is given. You have to register before you can obtain this number. Okay. And then there's this stat index. You can see the wireless stat TX thread. So this is the format, for example. Okay, you can you can you can take a look at more details on this online. But basically, if you see something in front of the object type, okay, this is the things that you can monitor inside Microtech, okay? If you open up the MIB file. Okay. SMI, we just quickly go through because this is what we call SMI, the You see this, you can see this funny, funny format, right? This is what we call SMI. This is the one that defines what can be monitored. When you connect to the OID, you get the value. 
what is this value? Okay. So you define the object. Remember, object is something that we want to monitor. CPU usage, that is an object. Memory, free memory, that is an object. Okay. So you define the name, the type. Is this a numbers? Is this a string? Okay, and the encoding and all other information. Okay. So this is like a complete one. So you can see how the structure from one four nine one one it go to one. And then from one, one, and then you can you can take a take a look. How the tree actually go through up to the bottom one to the object that you want to monitor. External software. Remember, we talked that we require external software to get the information. Okay. Without the external software, the SMB itself means nothing. It's running there, but what can you do? Right. So you can use the next SMB. This is a this is a package, a, a command line package interface. Usually, it's used by Linux, and if you want to see the visual, you can see nice interface, the graph up, down, different color. All right, these are the tools they can use. Okay. MRTG is a big snake. Yes, these are free. PRTG, you have to pay for it. But they will give you a nice graph, just like the graphing. Okay. Okay. Demo, yes, no, skip. Yes? <laughs> okay. So let's take a look the graph that we created. The Remember on the previous chapter, we created a graph. We enable the IP graphing. So to view this graph, right, you have to open up a browser, go to the router address, make sure it's not blocked by the firewall. Then you see there's a graph. So once there are some information available, you see the list here. See, if we take a look, there's nothing. Because this interface is, has nothing connected to it. Okay. But when we go to WLAN 1, we should see something here. So the graph that you see for each of these, this, this daily, weekly, monthly, it could be slightly different. Because the average data that is used right, to, to generate this display it could be different. Okay. Now, SMB. So we have our router. How do we configure SMP? IP, SMP, enable. Contact information. You can actually fill in whatever information you want. This is just a text string. Okay, location. Communities, this is like a random string. Usually it's random, but it doesn't have to be random wherever you want. Right? This is like a password. There's no username. You just have a need the community to connect to the agent. So we do it public. We, we put public 
There's no restriction on the address. Okay. Apply. That's it. Very simple, right? This is why it's called simple network management protocol. Few clicks, your SMP in the router is enabled. So how do we get the information? If you have a Mac, I'm not sure about Windows. Okay. Mac already have a built-in. You can see all the command. So which one do you use? We have to load the Microtech MIB information. Because in OID, there is a name, there is an ID. So it's like we have a DNS, we have a host name, we have an IP address. You don't want to remember the IP address because there are so many numbers. Okay? So text is easier for us to remember. But to translate the text to the number, right, we need to load the MIB file. This is like a DNS for SMP. So we load this, and then we just have to put in this one, the name, then it will know which OID to look for. Okay? So we have public, the one that we just created. If you doesn't know what is this IP address, you should not be here. <laughs> this is the microtech default IP address. Okay, so it's very simple. You have the community name. You have the IP address of the router. I want to get this information. You return you. This is using the microtech MIP. This is the name. Zero is for the default because this is the last ID. Okay, there's no more dot dot something. This is the last one. And it's a string. It's not a number. 6.42.5. So with all this information, for example, you can create a script, right? Connect to all your routers, get this information, or out. And you know which router Router OS version is not updated. And you can easily find out. You have 500 routers. You get the list. And you know what happened when you didn't upgrade your router. Anybody know what's happened earlier this in 2018? Around March or April? There was a security problem in Microtech, which is very, very big. Actually, it's, it's, it's fixed in a matter of days, but a lot of users that never monitor the router, right? There are a few hundred thousand routers in the world that was hacked. But if you monitor your router, if you manage your router, you know the version is not updated. There you go. So this is the example of the SMP. Okay. Traffic flow. So we just quickly get through the flow because um, you probably want to understand SMP first. Use it before you go into the flow because the flow is particularly um, focused on the network details. Okay, but the uh, uh, software that I'm going to introduce to you, right, is not just for flow. It can be a lot of things. Okay, it can also become a syslog server and store all your routers log file. Okay. 
So what is the flow? So flow provides statistic for the network traffic. Okay, is compatible with Cisco NetFlow. So there are actually three major versions in the market. Okay, one, five, and nine. ELK. What is ELK? Okay. So ELK consists of Elasticsearch. This is where you store the data. Okay. Then there's a log stash. This is input. This is where you collect the information. It, it, it's not actually collect, but this is a, so, uh, a process that's running and receive information. Okay. How you collect the information? There are many ways. Okay. This is a Kibana. Visual. The data you collected inside, you can view it with Kibana. Or you can create your own web software or whatever, then you can extract the data. Okay, so most importantly is log slash and elastic search. Okay. So how is the flow between these three? This looks like K, so we know this is Kibana. <laughs> e, Elasticsearch, and L. Simple. Right. Log stash. So you know Kibana will be reading the data from Elasticsearch and provide visual to the users. Log stash will actually store the data inside. Right. So why? It's open source. SMP information is not detailed enough because it's very simple. It's a simple protocol. You ask the OID, it gets you the information. Only one piece of information. That's it. It's simple. Okay? And it supports more than just flow. If you have a big network, it can support clustering as well. Okay? You can direct query into the data. You don't actually, it's not must, it's not a must to use the Kibana, okay? You can go directly to the database and then collect the information. For example, it's, it's, it's very high performance. Example of 5 Gbps, right? You can handle 100,000 flows per second, okay? Okay, so Logstash is open source and it's server side processing. So it's not running inside your router, it's running somewhere. And then it ingests data from multitude source. It can get from files, it can get from HTTP, it can get from the NetFlow or Syslog. Right? A, lot, a lot of way to do the input. So there are different plugins. If you want to see the available plugins, right? Can you guess how many total input plugin that it has? How many ways that Logstash can receive information? Guess how many? There are over 50 ways you can collect information. NetFlow is just one of it. It can be far, it can read the file, it can read your Apache log file, Jinx log file, right? It, can do it via TCP and UDP. So you can imagine, if you use this log stash, right, what are the things that you can actually receive information? Okay. So you can also do a few examples. Amazon CloudWatch, you can receive the data, the information, S3, file, GitHub, webhook. Okay. It has this thing called filters. So when the data, data arrive, right, this, you have the access to change what you want inside. Maybe you want to put some mark on this particular stream flows that are coming in, right? Additional information for you to identify. Hmm? Then there's an the output. Again, you have many, many, many ways of receiving data. You also have many ways of saving the data. And of course, in uh, this presentation, we talk about Elasticsearch. Okay? 
but it can actually save data to other places. Okay, hmm? Elasticsearch, this is the heart of the ELK. Why we call it hard? Because if this one is down, then the whole ELK stack is useless. Okay. You can receive data, you cannot save it. Okay. It's open source. The whole ELK is open source. Okay. So it's distributed. It's RESTful search. Okay. So it's uh, centrally stored data. So all the data will come into the elastic search. Okay. And it's really, really, really fast. Try it. It's really fast. Okay? You can save numbers, you can save text, you can save geo coordinates, structure, unstructured, whoa, a lot of data inside. Hmm? Kibana? Okay. It's recommended that after setting up the uh, elastic search, we, we set up the Kibana. So here okay, consists of three software you need to set up. But it's not difficult. Okay. So this is how it could look like. It could look like. Meaning that there are other ways to display data. This is just one of it. Okay, at the end of the presentation, we see a, a few ways how they actually display the data. Okay. Again, it's open source, it's GUI, and it creates to visualize the data. The installation is I would say that it's straightforward. You can download if you are familiar with compiling source code, it's available because it's open source. Download it. You can modify, do what you want, do the installation. Okay. Binary installation. Okay. So it's uh, YAM, ABT, MSI. Familiar with this? The first two is usually used by CentOS, Linux, and Debian. Okay. MSI, Windows, PKG. Or you can use Docker. Anybody use Docker? Ah, good. Okay. <laughs> so there's a repository. You just have to add. If you manage CentOS Linux, then you know that this is you can close eyes and do this. Easy. Okay. Okay, so it's easy, fast and manageable. So after you install your Elasticsearch, the first one that we install is Elasticsearch. You can go try to connect to it and you should get this information. Means that your Elasticsearch is running. Okay. Logstash. So this is the data source. This is the Logstash, how actually it process the information. Okay, so for example, we are using NetFlow. For the data source is from the NetFlow. Go to the inputs, okay? Filter it, any information you don't want it, throw it away, or you want to add information, output to Elasticsearch. Okay? Configuration, you see? Very simple. Okay? Kibana installation is also very simple. But Kibana itself, right, is run as an application. Usually you want a Jinx reverse proxy in front of it. Because the Kibana is not designed to serve public web server. Okay, so it's running on 561. This is the example. So we know that Elastic is in the middle. Okay, it's the heart. Log stash, provide the input and save it here. And then you can use Kibana, you can create your own software to read from the Elastic search. Okay. So some example on how you can display the information. You get the flows, you save it inside uh, log stash, accept the flows, accept the information, save it inside the elastics. You can see this information. This is the example of the information. You can see how you can actually separate the information and see it clearly. Oh, who, where is my network traffic going through? Okay. Pretty nice, right? And you don't have to touch about web GUI design or web programming. It's all there for you to use. All the information, you can even display a map. This is how powerful is the ERK stack. Okay. 
if you want to know about more about ERK stack, right? We actually organize a user group in Singapore. If you happen to come to Singapore on March 8, right? Join us. We talk about this. Usually we have a meeting every once every few months. It depends on whether people are busy or not. So okay. Any questions? Are you all waiting for the uh, lottery? Okay, this is my contact. If you want my number, come to me. <laughs> okay, my Facebook and Telegram. No questions? That's all? Okay, then this will be my presentation today. Thank you.